All right, what's up, everybody? Give it up for Jimmy on that awesome narc run. That was a that was a nice bonus. He fucking killed it. He has surpassed me as the uh, the true narc grandmaster. That was a fun watch. Anyway, I'm gonna be closing out the stream tonight with the uh, uh, with uh, with a game I haven't run yet in this marathon. Two years ago, I ran the original Shock Troopers, and I waited until now to uh, to do the sequel, Shock Trooper Second Squad, because. I don't know, there's been some, uh, let's just say, misconceptions about this game. People have always said, oh, Second Squad, isn't that game garbage? And other people have said, oh, doesn't BBH hate that game? Neither of which is true, by the way. But we'll get into that. Let's, uh, let's just watch the intro and then we'll get started. Hope you all can read really fast. Also, rip encoding. <laughs> Shock Troopers, second squad. Second squad. All right, let's do this. Of course, being the English version, they actually swapped the B and C buttons for some reason. Where instead of B jumping and C doing your your bomb, C does jumps in this version. I don't know why. Anyway, if you missed the intro, it's just four soldiers are sent in to stop the evil DIC Corporation. They have 72 hours to do it. That's all you need to know. You don't you don't need a lot of plot for arcade games. Aim for high score by collecting keyword on plate items. Even though that's not really the key to a high score, but whatever. Anyway, this game is completely different from the first uh, Shock Troopers. Got rid of all uh, all eight characters, replaced them with only four new ones. And there are uh, definite tiers, and as, as much as I want to play Angel, as much as I want to play Waifu in this game, we got to go with the uh, we got to go with the safe choice because cool. Toy's got a stand gun. <laughs> All right, first thing I'm gonna do hit a few guys with the stand gun. And then I'm gonna do some dancing. It's a little hidden bonus. So one of the... There's, there's some big changes in this game compared to the uh, the original Shock Troopers. The first thing everybody notices, of course, is the graphics. They tossed the uh, the attractive hand-drawn uh, sprites from the uh, the first game out the window and decided to do these uh, these ugly, cartoony, pre-rendered graphics. And for a lot of people, that's the, uh, the biggest turn-off with the game and why a lot of people don't like it. And yeah, you're going to be hearing boners a lot during this run. Hopefully I got the audio balance right. Oops. Going for the extra bonus by killing enemies with bombs. Alright, so there's a random chance for that one soldier that comes out to either be a lady you can save or the, the go-to-hell guy. If she's the other lady, you get a 19,990 bonus, but you actually lose the points if you uh, if you shoot her. If it's the go to hell guy, you just have to get out of the way. Anyway, vehicles. Vehicles were something that weren't in the original Shock Troopers. There's vehicles you can get into, and you can you can do charge attack with the vehicles by holding down the attack button, which actually gives you uh, more points. You get times six from killing uh, enemies with a full charge shot. So the biggest, one of the biggest changes with this game is that uh, the original Shock Troopers had a roll button, which uh, you were stuck rolling in the same direction. Whoops. Uh, that's not good. Ooh, I don't want to take a hit that early. I might have to... Hmm, okay. But this game has jumping, and when you jump, you can, uh, you can change direction at any point in the jump, so you can jump all over the place. Here I'm going to pick up a... A special weapon, the round charger. There's uh, there's special weapons in this game that uh, uh, kind of lead to uh, breaking the balance of the game, which isn't a good thing. Boner. 
because once I have a once I have the special weapon, I took a hit there, but it did not affect my health bar. Any hits you take while you have a special weapon active actually drain your energy bar at the bottom, which is the amount of ammo you have. Which means effectively you have two life bars. Unfortunately, I can't get health back while I have this this weapon active, so I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna take a hit here just to try to get a chance at some health items because here's another problem: health items are never guaranteed in this game. You don't get any health back between stages. There's no uh, there's no preset points that actually give you health. The only way you can get health is to uh, kill enemies with close range attacks and hope for the best. Or bombs. Bombs also make enemies drop items. So this is a, a leech point. It is it is time. There's only so many enemies you can kill that come out of this, uh, this clown car truck. And these guys never actually fire at you. There, I got a life up. That's good. Unfortunately, that life up wasn't enough to recover entirely, but it's good enough. There we go. Okay, now I feel better. I'm always on edge when I don't have uh, full health in this game because... That first hit only did like 40% damage to me, but... Near the, uh, in the second half of the game, uh, enemies just do way too much damage. You can lose up to 75% of your life with one hit. Which really sucks in a game where you don't, uh, you don't have guaranteed health drops at any point. Also, when I pick up these gold coins, the animation actually goes from the spinning gold coin to the bars. When you pick it up determines what bonus you get. You have to get it on like the frames like when it advances from the gold bars back to the coin. That gives you the 19,990. Accidentally shot an enemy and dropped my chain. When you kill enemies in a row with close range attacks without firing a shot, it gives you a, a, a multiplier up to times eight as long as you just keep killing enemies with uh, uh, close range attacks. Anyway, now we can actually fight the boss. Multi-kill? Eh, not bad. You can get multi-kills with, uh, with bombs, too, but the max you can get is times six. Rock with the beat. And yeah, those, uh, those little letters that pop up, the, uh, the letter plates, the goal of those is to spell out the, uh, the word that's underneath your health bar. In this case, brain. Every character has a, a different code name. Oh yeah, this, uh, this game also lets you, uh, select a route between the two stages. I always go the, the naval base route, because that tends to be a, a higher scoring route from what I know. Naval base, recovery operation. So yeah, those uh, those plates actually drop uh, the letters of brain, but if you pick up one letter that's not the uh, that's not in the word brain, it resets it. Like, I can get the R and the I there. But if I pick up anything that's not B-R-A-I-N, it just goes back to having to redo the word. But if you spell the word, you only get a 19,990 bonus, which is the same bonus you get from uh, picking up a gold coin at the right time, so... Shit, I did not get a, uh, a flamethrower from that thing. I was hoping for a special weapon drop, so... Uh, oh, shit. Kinda fucked that up, but that's alright. Hopefully I don't take a hit here. Uh... Enemy AI in this game can be, can be quite random, so... You have no idea when they're actually going to fire at you. So I end up spending a lot of time just, uh... If things look hairy, I'll just use a bomb, because... Well, let's get back to uh, what I was saying about the characters at the beginning, since, uh... I am using Toy, I can't play, uh... I, I could play Waifu in this game, but I don't want to risk it in the marathon, because the, uh... The female characters in this game got really dicked over. Because whenever you use a bomb when you're using either Leon or Toy, the two male characters, their bomb actually has the added capability of destroying all bullets on the screen. Which is super useful. Super fucking useful. For some reason, neither Angel or Lulu have that capability. And that comes into play big time on the last boss. That makes the last boss a lot harder. And a lot, uh... A lot easier for Leon and Toy. So if you are actually aiming to try to 1cc this game, I highly recommend using either Leon or Toy. Leon's probably the safer choice, but I think Toy's more fun to use just because he's a little bit faster. His bomb is this, this really cool close range attack. Okay, 
Okay, this is kind of dangerous, so I'm just gonna bomb through these guys. They'll still drop items, even if you kill them with a, uh, with a bomb, so... Oops, I almost got hit there. And of course, I'm going to hope and pray that these tanks up here drop the, uh, the round charger. I didn't get a flamethrower from the, from those other tanks, so... All the tanks that have, like, the, the same capability as special weapons... Uh, they have, like, a, I think a 50% chance of dropping a, uh, a weapon. There we go. So now that I actually have the round charger, that means if I take a hit, it's not going to... It's not going to affect my health bar. It's only going to affect the, uh, the energy bar at the bottom, so... You always feel safer. You feel like you have more insurance when you have that, uh, that second health bar. Yes, this is a long, unskippable cutscene. The other fun thing about this game is that the uh, the close-range attacks have a, a ton of active frames. Like, you can hit so many enemies with a single close-range attack in multiple directions like that. Like, I just hit six with one with one stand gun stub. Stand gun stub? Stand gun stab. I'm getting all tongue-tied trying to, trying to make use of this English. I'm trying to get a, a bonus kill if I can hit these guys with the bomb. Wow, he actually blocked it. And then I took that hit. It's okay, because the, uh... The round charger is actually the worst weapon in the game. Believe it or not, the flamethrower is not the worst weapon in this game. The round charger is completely shit tier. Because to do any sort of damage, you have to actually charge it. Hence the name round charger. But even then, even then, I'll still pick up the round charger just for the, uh, the extra health. Alright, boat boss. This, this boss is... Uh, it's not that bad, but it does take a little while. And yes, this game has a lot of slowdown, as you can see. It's even worse with two players. I can I actually hit this before the... Yes. Okay. Before it starts the second Gatling gun phase. I have played this for laughs, just for what the, uh, the speed overclocked in MAME. Just to see what it's like with no slowdown, and... Ooh, it, it makes a, a load of difference on some things. Especially the last boss. Which I'm already kind of hyping up, but... Okay, uh, that's not good. Ooh, that's really bad, actually. There goes, uh, 75% of my health from one hit. I kind of... Took him over to the other side of the screen a little too quickly. I should have waited a little little longer on the bomb, just to... The bomb can get rid of the laser, but I used it too soon. Shit. Like I said about the damage in this game, it's ridiculous. I hate to jam with ham dancers. I couldn't agree more, Toy. I have no idea what that means. So it's going to take me three health drops just to get all that health back. And I could go the entire stage killing as many enemies as possible with close range attacks. They might not drop any health. Who knows? Let's hope for some good luck. Also, Bakely, Straw Belly. Also, this stage is also completely terrifying to me now because I've been having, uh, I've been having some issues with the boss, namely the the boss deciding to uh, soft reset the game, which I swear I have never seen happen before on on actual hardware. I guess that's the risky run of playing this game in MAME, but uh, I think I have strats that uh, that prevent the boss from soft resetting, but uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay, no health drops. Shit. Mini 
question. Don't know how it drops. Oh, the next part's gonna be rough. Just now realizing. I do have a backup just in case the uh, the worst happens on that boss. But oh shit. Um. Yeah, I don't want to reset. If I go too far, that uh, the tank was gonna scroll off screen. So. So these general enemies, I don't know if they actually are generals, I just call them generals. They have a chance to drop uh, special weapons if you kill them with a close range attack. But uh, these guys are being jerks. Okay, fuck it. I'll just wait for the next one. Still no help. I may just have to go with super safe strats on this level. I like to go for as many close range attacks as possible, but uh, uh, this level has a lot of those blue and red enemies that are really, uh, really unpredictable. Like right here, there's that one that just stops off screen, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go super safe on this. And I took a hit with the vehicle. Okay, get in there. Thank you. I almost died. Okay, uh, this is kind of not good. Okay, that was actually really close because uh, that enemy was turning into a suicide bomber. And even if you destroy that suicide bomber with a close range attack, the, uh, the explosion lingers for a bit and can actually hit you. So I am lucky I got that in time. Please drop the round charger. He did not drop a round charger. Shit! Okay, this is, uh, this is kind of bad. Especially this part. I always like to... Okay, if I can get the general to come back. I think he went off screen, actually. Of course, the other thing is I don't want to waste all these bombs. I kind of need the bombs for the boss in case the, uh, in case of the worst case scenario. Yes, health. Although that still might not be enough health to survive one. Yeah, that's not going to be enough health to survive one hit from the blue guys. Still, it's a start. Shit. Close range attack didn't have enough range. Alright, safe strats. My score is going to be crap because of this, but it's alright. Wow, that didn't reach. Luckily, there is a tank up here, which I'm going to get into ASAP. Although, I don't want to take too much damage with the tank. I need it alive for the boss. Oops, oh, suicide bombers. So there is going to be a chance to get a, uh, a missile launch. Oh, shit. That did not go as planned. All right. <laughs> there is going to be a chance to get a missile launcher here. There's two chances, actually. I really hope it drops it. Did not drop it. Whoa, I was stuck for a second. Okay, I have one more chance. But I still need to keep the tank alive. The tank is like one hit away from blowing up right now. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Finally some luck. I can do the boss without the missile launcher, but like I said, I just want to have the insurance. Is that it? No, there's one more wave. Also, there is a limit to how many items can be on screen when you uh, when you kill enemies with close range attacks. There's only You can only have like five items max on screen at once. All right, let's hope and pray I don't get the uh, the soft reset. This is what I'm worried the most about in this run. I mean, this is kind of a weird boss. It's a it's kind of a four part boss that goes through different phases. 
And the phases actually change depending on which ones you, uh, what, what order you destroy them in. So this is why I wanted the tank alive. With the, uh, with the tank on screen, it doesn't take damage from anything, but it can actually, uh, act as a shield. So it blocks some of the bullets on this, on this boss. Alright. Please don't reset. Please don't reset. Please don't reset. Yes! No reset. Okay, we're in there. Also, yes, the uh, tank can actually block these bullets. Also, ever since somebody pointed out that it looks like there's a, uh, a face with a goofy grin at the bottom of that tank, I can't unsee it now. God, fuck you, whoever said that. Tank Coon's doing his best, though. He's, he's doing a good job blocking bullets. A matter of dodging these. So if I left one of the other, uh, the different colored pieces of the boss alive, I would have had to dodge uh, these these weird explosions that linger on the screen. That actually makes it harder. This is the, the easiest way to do this boss. To only have the uh, the drills and the, the little tiny bullets. So oh, health! Oh, okay, this. Please don't fire. Thank you. Oh my God, that's that's some good luck. I may actually be able to survive a hit now. I'll play the last phase. It's super easy. Rock with the beat. <laughs> yeah, slowdown comes in super useful there, especially since Toy's Laser has a, a tendency to cause slowdown. So earlier in the game, I, I I had a selection of which route I took. That only affects stages uh, 2 and 3. Stages 4 and 5 are the same. I'll give you an 8 to the bar. I'll do some dancing. Alright. Stage does have some pretty hot jams, too. Time can be a uh, concern on this stage, though. If you go slowly, you might uh, you might run a little low on time. But uh, when you reach a boss, you actually get 30 seconds added to the timer, so don't get worried if the timer's down to like four or five seconds by the time I get to the boss. But this stage can be uh, can be a little nasty. There's a ton of these blue and red soldiers that that do a lot of damage. I think the first half of the stage is actually harder than the second because there's no uh, there's no special weapons to pick up. So I'm just gonna keep doing the sweeping shot with the uh, with the truck just for the the easy time six kills. There will be some chances of special weapons in the second half. So yeah, I talked a bit about how you know I don't I don't hate this game. I've over time I've come to I've come to accept this game for what it is. Obviously, if you uh, if you know me, you know that I'm a oh nice life up, a huge fan of the original Shock Troopers. It's one of my favorite games ever made. I've probably spent more time playing it than any other person on the planet. And I was so fucking hyped when I when I heard that this game was coming out. Cause this game came out like less than a year after the original Shock Troopers, but. Like, it looked a little goofy in the screenshots, but I was still, like, super hype. I mean, a Shock Trooper sequel, holy shit. And then the first credit I played, I was just like, uh, I was, I was so, I was so conflicted. I, I didn't know what the hell I just played. Also, I just picked up the flamethrower, by the way. Here's the thing about flamethrowers in video games. Flamethrowers are either really good or really bad. In this game, yeah, it, it's pretty bad, but just by virtue of it giving a uh, giving you a second health bar, it's good. It's good and bad. That's how it works. 
Anyway, yeah, the game's given me a lot of special weapons now. There's a round charger. I don't want that. I actually have a missile right now that's pretty good. I am gonna take a hit here, though. <laughs> you know I had to say the thing at some point, right? It's cliche at this point, but... I gotta give the people what they want. Was I? Yeah, that's what I, that's what I was saying, Oshawa. I was very disappointed when I first played this. I was just like, what the hell did I just play? This this, this does not play anything like the original Shock Troopers. And of course, I got bodied like the uh, the first time I played it. I was just wondering, like, when I got to the last boss, I was just like, how the fuck is a one CC on this possible? Because like the first few times I played Shock Troopers, I was like, I can see how this is one CCable. I just got to better learn the uh, the patterns and all that, but. When I saw the last boss, I was just, on this game, I'm just like, no, this can't be possible. Of course it is. It actually is. But, uh, the way to do it is a little ghetto. Alright, I can actually go for close range kills again, because I have a, I have a boomerang. I took a hit there, but it's okay. It's all good. Okay, I want this guy on the screen so he can actually... I'll pick up the round charger now if it drops, because I need to refill the life bar. Alright, is she gonna be a girl? Yes! I almost hit her, too. Like I said, you actually lose points if you attack the girl before she runs off the screen. Most of the time, it's not worth bothering with those, with those hostages, just for the... Just because of the off chance that... Wow, that did a lot of damage. I thought the tank could survive one more hit. That does happen sometimes. Ow! Okay, luckily I can get rid of the round charger pretty soon. There's gonna be like four generals that come out. I think I killed one off screen. Oh wait, no, that was one of the other guys. Wow, none of them dropped a weapon. Oh, I think I killed one of the generals. Hmm, okay. Interesting. Also, I guess I am running pretty low on time. Uh, I might have to speed it up a bit. Shit. Alright, unskippable cutscene. Whenever you move to the right, the uh, the trucks just knock over and destroy that mech. These mechs are new. They haven't shown up in the game yet. They're pretty good. I need to I need to keep this mech alive for the for the boss. Wow, triple boomerang. Boomerang. Time's running out, but we're still okay. Although I should maybe uh, skip the last few close range kills. Okay, so this boss. This boss looks really intimidating if you don't know the strats. Hopefully I can get the quick kill. Because look how many targets there are on this boss. If you let that boss get started, and it just starts uh, opening up all the compartments and firing at you, that boss fight can go a lot differently. Like, just uh, just try to play this game, get up to this point, don't use those strats, and just try to fight that boss normally. It's it's a lot nastier. Alright, final stage. Luckily, the last stage isn't too difficult until you get to the last boss. This is actually the hardest part if you don't have the, uh, if you don't have a special weapon, but because I was able to destroy the boss entirely with the mech, I still have the, the boomerang, so I have a second health bar. So yeah, when you have a, a second weapon, note it dropped a, a green energy. That's because uh, 
You can't get health drops when you have a, a secondary weapon. It only drops the energy. So like I said, it's this weird, uh, it's this weird feeling of being on edge after you take a hit. And you pick up a special weapon. You have insurance against dying, but you can't get health back until you drop the special weapon. It sucks. Anyway, you can go one of three routes in the stage. You have to go through all three rooms either way. I prefer to go through it in this order. Also, this level does have very hot jams. These lasers don't hurt you, they just bring out more enemies, so I'll just do that for points. Took a hit, no big deal. There's more generals. Ooh, the round charger. I'll pick it up anyway. Slow down is real. Ugh, stop, stop carrying around chargers, you idiots. Waiting for that item to go off the screen. Alright, don't actually need the knife for this part. I just keep going for close range kills. Oh yeah, this game does have a... Uh, it gives you a military rank at the end of the game. And I don't know all the criteria for for getting like the highest rank possible, but the highest rank is General of the Army. And generally, like getting like 9, 10 million and finishing the game on one credit will give you the, the highest rank. If you don't finish the game on one credit, you can't get the highest rank. That's the most important part, of course. As it should be. And I do like that this game uh, actually keeps track of scores for each character. Like it has a separate top 7 for every character. I like little things like that to give you incentive to use the other characters, so you have to use Angel at some point if you want to if you want to get on the Angel high score list. And it has an overall top seven list for all the lists combined. Oh yeah, you can't hit those guys with uh, close range attacks. I did that yesterday too. Or not yesterday, Thursday. Missile launcher, I'll take that, especially after I take a hit. Oop, got that gold. Woo, woo! Woo, woo! Okay, while I have this platform, this is a uh, a public service message. Well, not a public service message, but more of a, of a call to arms. If anybody knows anything about what's necessary to get, like, a, a world record score in this game, because the world record scores for this game are in the 28 to 30 million range. If you can find any videos, anything, any information about the game, please share it with me. There is no documentation on on how to get like the highest possible score in this game. My highest score back in the day was was 14 million. That's half of the world record. Since then, somebody figured out the uh, there is like a a leech point on the uh, on stage four. Which makes up for some points, like you can actually break 20 million that way, but uh, it's still not enough. There's no, uh, there's no public replays, videos, or anything. I would really like to know. Cause I think you'll, I think we can agree. I've, I've, you know, I've been playing this game not optimally. I've been. There's a lot of enemies I was I was shooting and not hitting with close range attacks, but there's no way I lost 18 million worth of points over the course of this game. So somebody please figure it out for me. It's been driving me nuts for like 15 years, and there's still nothing. This is actually like a very minor leech point. Like you can just keep going back and forth here and keep killing these enemies, which I'll I'll do for a little bit time runs low. This is also a good point to get to get bombs back if you're not at, at max bombs, but I already am, so whatever. Well, all the, uh, all the world record scores were verified by uh, either Gamest or Arcadia or Neo Geo Freak, whatever Japanese magazine was, was tracking the scores back in the day. And, like, all those scores were, were done, like, pretty much after the game came out, back in, like, 1999. The game came out at the end of 1988, but I think all those scores are dated 99. 
Akko's actually looked into this, and he couldn't figure it out either. Like, he actually wants to, he wants to actually know the, the, the tricks too, but... So, I don't know. Anyway, time's running out. Let's ran that dude over. Mm -mm. I don't know the actual name of the, the world record holder. It's in the, it's in one of Jimont's uh, world record lists, but I don't know if the guy like has a has a Twitter or any kind of if this guy's on the any sort of presence on the on the internet or whatever. And I really want to know how it's possible. Anyway, we have a really long cutscene ahead of us between the uh, the head of DIC and the uh, the other guy. So I'll take this opportunity to talk about the last boss before before I actually fight the last boss. I've been I've been talking for a while about how much of an asshole the last boss is. Here's how it works: the last boss is on a uh, is on a platform that's spinning around. You can't attack him until the the platform stops. And there's all these other compartments that are that are spinning around. There's like eight different compartments. The first two phases or the first two spins, you have to uh, actually dodge the attacks from the uh, the compartments that all have they all have different attacks. Like they fire different kinds of bullets, and it's random which ones you have to dodge. You can shoot the compartments, but if you blow them up, it releases a, a little satellite that moves around the screen, and that satellite fires these uh, these green reflecting lasers everywhere. They actually reflect off the walls and they go all, all over the place. And that actually makes it harder. But when you do enough damage to the actual last boss, who by the way looks looks a lot like Rugal. When you do, do enough damage to the uh, the last boss, all the compartments blow up at once. And you have eight satellites just firing lasers all over the place. And so my strat is to just try to, try to rush him down as fast as possible. Mash the shit out of Toy's Bomb and hope it does enough damage. That's what you're going to see here. Crick. Yeah, here we go. This, uh... Well, I still have two lives. It should be a lock, but I shouldn't say anything like that. That's... That's Marathon Curse. There's the platform he's standing on. You can't shoot him immediately. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta ride spinners. Ooh, flinter! All right. Luckily, I do have a full stock of missiles, so I have a second health bar. Okay, that's a good pattern. Like I said, the patterns you get on this part are, are random. Now I can attack him when he's coming up. Except he's gonna block. It's random what he decides to do. He can he can block your attacks, or he'll just fire at you or throw bombs or whatever. Now he appears every other every other spin. Like the first time you had to wait for two spins of this to attack him. Now it's every spin, every other spin. And yeah, those satellites have a shitload of health. That's why I'm not attacking these things. Uh-oh. That should have done a lot of damage to him at least. Oh, it didn't hit that missile. And yeah, now he's gonna fire. He's actually doing the the aim shots too. You can either do an aim shot or it'll just kind of spread out the shots. I still have eight bombs, but I'm saving those for the the rush that shit down phase. Uh oh. Okay, fuck it. Now I'll start actually firing. I'm probably not going to kill these things, so I'm just firing to cause extra slowdown on the screen. Also to destroy any missiles that come up. I'm just going to bomb here to get rid of those flames. Oh, on the other side. Toy's actually not so good for this fight unless you uh, 
just get in his face and spam bombs. His his gun is not so good for this boss compared to uh, compared to Leon's shot. What? That was a a rather delayed explosion on that bomb. All right. Finger on the bomb button. All right, fuck it. I'm just gonna rush him down. And here we go. It's bullet hell time. Get back here! Get back here! Oh, almost. Ah, I bomb. I canceled my bomb. The bomb started and then it canceled out. That last bomb would have killed him. That would have been a no miss. <laughs> oh well. Not bad. Sometimes there's so much slowdown. If uh, you activate your bomb. It'll actually stop the bomb animation, and the bomb doesn't activate. Which is what happened there. Oh well, it's still 1cc. Can't complain about that. Seventy-two hours after the outbreak of the coup d'etat, the general perished in the flames along with his ultimate weapon. The nightmare has ended. The mission is accomplished. And your reward? The hottest jams of summer 1999. Crank that shit. Oh yeah, Bataku HK, I forgot to point that out. My favorite name in the credits. Oh wait, we got one more message. Which you can actually skip if you if you mash on the credits, so I will not skip it. No more war. No more weapon. No more blood. And no more tears. No more blood. I want one CC marathon to close that way. Anyway. Hey, General of the Army rank. And that's Shock Trooper Second Squad, and that's going to do it for me. Those were the only two runs I was doing this year for the 1cc marathon. I had a great time. I've had a great time watching the uh, the runs the past two days. And and guess what? We still have one more day tomorrow. There are still a lot more runs that are uh, that are going to happen tomorrow, and I'm uh, I will definitely be there to watch them. So thank you everybody for watching, and I will uh, toss it back over to Pasky. Till next time, I will see you next.